So, as our normal disclaimer, yeah, this is how I teach the CSWIFT 3.2 course. It changes between lecturers. We follow the same content, but depending on the class we have in front of us, we might spend more time on some, less on the other. So, uh, just use this as an overall sort of view of how the course looks. And of course, this in this video, it's my opinion. It's not endorsed by C-SWIP or TWI Trainer. So who's it for? Well, the welding, Senior Weld Inspector course is for people who want to move forward, probably into a supervisory role, or if you're going to be the main client inspector on a site, holding the C-SWIP 3.2 ticket is a, is a good boost for being able to show that not only do you have the knowledge levels for inspection, but also the NDT review side, as well as the uh, ability to connect more information than just what's in front of you in an ND, a visual NDT report. Right now, uh, so as of the 7th, a few days ago when I, when I checked, the current cost for this course is £1,627. That's on the TWI website, but of course, before you book, check what it is because you might get discounts and all sorts on if you're a professional member or sometimes you do discounts and giveaways and stuff like that. So have a look, but that's the standard cost. So that's for the four days training and the day's exam. So to get on the course, you need experience and the experience I want to talk about is again within the CSWIP WI692 document. And this document explains how the courses and the, the content in the scheme is run. They're the rules that TWI follow from CSWIP. And in there, we've got two entry methods. Uh, one's really like an academic -y type certification entrance method and the other is an experiential route. The first one, the, the holding the CSWIP for a minimum of two years, I'd say is like 99% the way that people come on to the course. I, in 15 years of teaching this, I'd be surprised if I'd seen more than a handful of people come through the mature route, the experience route of five years weld inspection because really by the time you've sat and done weld inspection for five years you probably already hold your seats with 3.1 um and i would definitely say do not try to do this course without having done the seats with 3.1 the the grounding the technical information to get us moving is all in 3.1. The moving on of that information and the knowledge base is in the 3.2. So if you want to try and do a 3.2 straight away, I, I wish you luck. I, I personally wouldn't look to do that. In whichever way you come, you've still got to have, you know, the, the candidates must comply with 1.3.4 of this document, which is uh, a few of us about, you know, health and uh, eyesight and all, all that type of stuff. So what duties would you perform uh, as a 3.2? Well, again, looking back at the 692 document, and this is in section 1.2.3, it's all the duties of a C-SWIP 3.0 and 3.1 plus these extra things. Now, the big difference between it is we're now moving to interpretation of drawings and NDT reports in a much deeper detail than we did at the 3.1. Uh, but I guess the main duty difference here would be the how we're going to start really understanding how quality standards 
and specifications are applied to maintain a system rather than just saying my standard says this, therefore accept and reject. So we've touched upon this already a little bit by seeing what is the difference between a 3.1 and a 3.2. Well, for a lot of the course, you know, at least half of it, you will see slides which you would have seen on your 3.1. Again, the difference here now is we're trying to take that 3.1 information and get you to connect the dots yourself. So as an example of that, for welding processes at 3.0, you basically do what is the welding process. We have MMA, we have TIG, we have MIGMAG, very quickly how they work, but that's pretty much it. At 3.1, we say, okay, here's our processes. You see, for MMA, this is how uh, consumables are identified and you, you're examined quite a bit on that. He has flat characteristic, drooping characteristic curves for how the power plants produce power. And then at 3.2, we'll add on there. Well, once you have identified your welding process, you understand how it works. Here's how a standard controls its use. So here's how a weld procedure qualification then sets out essential and non-essential, maybe supplementary essentials for ASME and how we, how we build a system to be able to work. So taking the knowledge, building it on, applying it in a scenario which isn't just a, what power characteristic does TIG use? It's a much more in-depth knowledge requirements. So one of the next big differences is in your exam you're going to be given NDT reports to review. Normally this is for reports so you would be given uh, an MPI, DIPEN, radiography and ultrasonic test report already filled out for you. You'll be asked a question and it's okay, lift test for MPI. With reference to your uh, the report you're given what is the lift test stated and is, is this acceptable? So you find on your report where it says lift test uh, and decide what weight it was carried out. Was it a 4.5 kilogram? Was it a 10 kilogram? Was it a 50 kilogram? You know, just identify where that information is. Take the TWI specification, which is quite a, a thick spec, but you would take your spec, go to the NDT section, find MPI, find what the requirements around the lift tests are, and then decide whether what you have in your report is acceptable or not. Let's say, you know, it's a 50 kilogram weight instead of a 4.5 and the spec says you need 4.5. So you say, no, it's, it says this and it's wrong. And you answer the question through that. The good thing about this, it, it's, a matter of finding the information and cross-checking it against a spec. Even if you have fairly low levels of experience directly with the NDT methods, as long as you have an idea of how they work, which we cover in the course, you should be able to still answer all of the questions. All of the answers are in front of you. There's a bit of information on the report. There's something in the specification cross-check them, away we go. So by all means, don't be worried about this. A lot of people get worried about the RT side of it, or the ultrasonics. But again, the information's on the report, it's in the spec. You'll be, you should be okay with it if you can logically read through and understand where you're heading. The next big part is drone symbols. So where are drone symbols applied? How do you identify them on a, a drawing? And then what do those drone symbols mean? So in CSWIP 3.1, it was very much a, here's the, the grounding of, of welding symbols. You know, 
your arrow line, your reference line, your identification line. He has an elementary symbol. He has where your cross-sectional area dimensions go and your linear dimensions go. But it's seen very much as just a very, what is this symbol? It, it's not really linked to the overall drawn itself. Well, in 3.2, you will be given a drawing of a part, you know, a pressure vessel, a, a deck fabrication, something which has quite a, few, quite a lot of information. It's an engineering drone which shows fabrication, welding points, and maybe some additional stuff. So your questions could be along the lines of, you know, in accordance with ISO 22553 or 2553, for, identify the joint they want you to see. So in this case, we're for joint number one. If the excess weld metal was removed to allow ultrasonics testing on the arrow side. So what we're going to do is we're going to look at our drone and you'll have a drone more complicated than this one, but it'll identify position number one. So okay, which of the following, which of these um, symbols mean what we're looking for. So we're looking for ultrasonics testing with the weld metal flat from the arrow side. So you look and you identify and you, you decide which one's correct. And then you move on to the next. And away we go again. What's the question? Where's the information? What's my answer? These can all be logically taken through, especially if you've already got the ground in at 3.1. So on our exam day, as with CSWIP 3.0 and 3.1, the pass mark is 70% per section. So at 3.2, it's a relatively shorter day compared to the 3.1. So again, all of this information is in 692 Appendix 1, Section 3. And it tells you what you need to do. So you'll do a general multiple choice question paper again it's a general paper so it can cover a lot of different things here so very much like the cease with 3.1 general multi-paper and for that you get 45 minutes you get a technical multi-choice paper which is um takes on some of it like the tech paper in 3.1 but adds in the specification so the TWI specification you'll have all week to kind of go through and, and, and understand, it will start asking you questions such as, you know, what preheat value is required for this type of steel or, you know, what NDT requirements, what mechanical test requirements are on this, this type of, of job. And you just find it in your section and, and work through it. You know, some might be on quenching tempered or on just straight carbon steel or on stainless steel or, you know. Again, take the question. It's normally in a, a paragraph type thing. Look for your information. I would make some notes on a, on a scrap bit of paper and then go to my spec and find the information it requires. Of course, you get 90 minutes for that because there's a little bit more to it and throwing in the, in the questions. You've got your inspection reports to, to look at. So that's four inspection reports, MPI, DIPEN, UT, RT. Each report has 10 questions with it. So that's 40 questions total. And that's 75 minutes to complete that. And then you've got your interpretation of your fabrication drawn, 10 questions. So as we looked at above, and you get 20 minutes for that. So you can see, if you just look at the time each exam gives you, you can kind of see where the difficulty kind of lies, the fabrication drone, you, know, you should mortar through that. It's 10 questions, 20 minutes, really fast, really quick. You know, you, you get the information, you can bounce through it. The specification question a technical multiple choice of 60 questions is a lot more in depth there's a lot more reading a question looking through and, and moving through it but again we cover all this during the week it's four days of a relatively small 
new content block, but that new content block is a little bit more, well, a lot more involved. So that's the C-Swift 3.2 in a very quick under 15 minutes. It's there to move you on, get you into a supervisory position or be a main client inspector on site, giving you the knowledge and showing that you have the competence to be able to make decisions with sometimes little or conflicting information. So I hope that was of use to you. Drop a comment below if you want to know anything else, and I'll keep an eye and I'll try and answer as much as I can. And uh, uh, remember, we've got our other videos covering a, a variety of different subjects, and we'll continue to produce those. So with that, thanks very much, and good luck with your studies.